Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. BetOnline is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests, odds, and lines right up to the national championship game. BetOnline is your number one source for all your college basketball wagering. Head to BetOnline today. Stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Seven years ago, college wrestler Damian Hurd disappeared from a party in Gunnison, Colorado. Everyone has been drinking or whatever the usual party scene. When, how, and why he left are questions I need your help to understand. Nobody's heard from him. No, it's just like he disappeared. From Cold Case Productions and Podcast One, Final Days on Earth, The Life and Death of Damian Hurd. I'm your host, Claire Sanima. Join me April 20th for the season premiere. Hey guys, welcome to CarCast, brought to you by Dodge. You know, Dodge is ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com today. Uh, CarCast is going to be fun. We're going to talk about the Toyota Tacoma. We're going to talk about what's going on with this chip shortage that is affecting all car manufacturers across the board. Uh, and uh, I think we'll get into a little bit of garage updates and things that are going on with uh, my stuff and uh, Goldberg's stuff as well. Uh, before we get started, uh, you know, over the past few years, Meguiar's, our friends at Meguiar's, has launched the next generation of protective products specifically geared toward DIYers. They have a new line of ceramic, hybrid ceramic products. They have their hybrid, cer- hybrid cer- ceramic spray wax. This is the one you can find in the bright blue bottle. It's got their advanced SiO2 hybrid technology and delivers a c- ceramic wax protection and durability beyond traditional wax. They also have their hybrid ceramic liquid wax. If you like to apply the liquid wax, it's a little bit easier. A little bit easier to do as well. This is long-lasting ceramic protection in an easy-to-use wax. Their ceramic spray detailer, this is a good one. This is one of our favorites. It's for the in-between boosted maintenance. It removes dust, fingerprints, bird droppings, uh, pretty much everything. Gives you that nice uh, protection and that shine. Um, And this year, they expanded to include their new hybrid ceramic wash and wax. This is in the bright orange bottle. It's a unique two-liquid system you blend together in one bucket. Just wash the car, gives it a nice ceramic wash and wax all in one. Meguiar's has a hybrid ceramic solution for everyone. It's ceramic made easy. It's Meguiar's. Hello, welcome to CarCast. I'm at the Motorator DeAndre with Bill Goldberg. Good morning, sir. How are you? Howdy, duty. How is it on the uh, the foreign coast of California? Uh, it's it's okay. It's funny. I I feel like we're getting like a hint of your weather. Like on the way here this morning, we're recording early today because uh, Chris has to go to Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was yeah. It was kind of raining on the way in. It was like. Just I just when it rained it like the little light mist like so much fog rolled in and I think it's just a bit of uh, a bit of that that's going on. But uh, did I see? Yeah, uh, here you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got seventy and cleaner, clear. Yeah, that's not that's not but bad. Rain forecast. For yeah, like a little bit, a little bit of a little bit of rain there as well. Do you, and we're getting California weather. You're you know, getting, we're in the seventies, and uh, it's like fifty at night. So, and the humidity's down, except for today. You know, I can cut it with a knife, but yeah, it's uh, it's an adventure. Um, I saw the uh, I saw some social media posts. I saw the tractors out there. <laughs> it's that time again. Moving, moving big rocks out of the out of the ground. And, oh, God uh, almighty! It's a never-ending process. You know, we we clear the rocks, and then it rains, and then there's a whole farm of them again. So, yeah, right. It's a never never-ending deal. It is what it is. I, I, the rains, what? It's got to help a little loosen up the ground. Or the, do they have a water truck out there to 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 loosen it up? Or no? I don't know how no, they're doing no, it. No, we just they're just digging. A, uh, you know, a just a big skid steer out there, guy just cranking them out of the ground. No, obviously the 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 rain helps loosen them up, but what it does is it takes the soil off of the top of the ones that are underneath and yeah. exposes more each and every time. It's like, hey man, I cleared the what the hell is that? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so it's like they multiply. They're like they're like uh, rabbits. 
It seems that way, but they're freaking rocks. <laughs> well, so. you, you got to go. At it. Well, look, the good news is is it's just the foundation, and you know when the guys are once that's done, having this kind of prefab thing going on is gonna it's gonna go quicker. I think you're gonna be. Well, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, there I finally did find a good side to the uh, consistency of the ground in that. After I got a new MEP for the footings for mm-hmm. the garage, it's, it looks as if we can go only, we can go half the distance previously planned. So obviously, I'll send I'll save a shitload in concrete. So um, we have an advantage to having a, a rock in the ground. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you don't have to do as much of the cement foundation because there's rock. Right, so you can only yeah, go deep more, enough. Get more dense than that rock. Good luck. Yeah, you're right. So you don't have to pour like a really, really thick slab. You can go a little bit thinner. Half the distance, actually, Yeah, what we're looking at right now. So eight inches to four inches. Wow. And and it, and it's basically going to sit on this bedrock, and that's going to be literally rock solid. <laughs> that was you, can the destroy the, you can destroy concrete at a much easier, quicker rate than you can this rock. So, yeah. I mean, it makes complete sense to me. I don't know why it wasn't thought of in the beginning, but, you know. Maybe they just didn't think there was going to be enough rock. They just thought, like, hey, we're going to move some rock, but who knew it was going to be the entire foundation of the building? Like, <laughs> exactly. this huge, you know, like this whole building is going to have a rock, uh, a bedrock underneath it. They had, I don't think anybody anticipated that until you sort of peel no, it back the first layer. Better, you know, yeah, it worked yeah, out that's good. A, that's the best case scenario. Well, there you go. It's an update on the on the garage, on the big garage, which is uh, exciting. Um, we've got uh, we've got some interesting things going on right now. Uh, I, actually, a good question would be the Goldberg's Garage Power Packs. We got some updates on that. You guys are still developing. We do and we don't. We we can't release information yet until all the tests have been run and we've cleared everything. Um, obviously we're looking at a grand partnership with Dodge. Um, and I, hopefully we'll simultaneously put press releases out there, but until we get all the results back and get, get, make sure everything is on the up and up, uh, I I don't want to announce anything, but, um, one of the packages will be put on the red eye now because the red eye is going back down to to Mario. So if I'm advertising Goldberg garage, I have to have a vehicle with each stage package. That, and here's another footnote, a little side note. My neighbor who's got the TRX yeah. is also sending his TRX down to Mario. So I figured, hey, it's a <laughs> two-car trailer. We got an open spot. Might as well send the red eye down. That's actually a pretty good idea. But what's even funnier is that I heard word that another TRX sold uh, to a person on rain. Yeah, I can't say that because that's where I live. Uh-huh. But uh, uh, another another TRX sold in town. And so that's number three. And mine was the first. My neighbor's was the second. And it turns out, since my neighbor is sending his TRX down to Mario in Florida, he bought a new one so that he could uh, not miss his, his original one, you know, during its time away. So yeah. <clears throat> he's a man after my own heart. <laughs> he's got the connection somehow. He's getting all these TRXs. Either that or he's buying them from people that got them, you know, like he's buying them used. I mean, what's arguably happening is that What's happening is that the other Dodge dealer that's around town has a very good relationship with him. And evidently somebody ordered the truck and didn't pick it up. And uh, just like the first one, they made the first call to, to Martin and he picked it up. My goal is to get on that list so that I'm the first call. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, you could end up start trading uh, uh, slots on that list for power packages because it sounds like he's uh, beefing up that whole collection of stuff. All right. Well, you pretty much answered the question that I was going to have, and that was, are the power packages you guys are developing for th- various Hellcat engines, or was it just for the truck? And now you're saying it's going to be for for the for the Hellcats. So for the Hellcats, yeah. And the reason why the the truck is the stickler right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're getting tests done and um, making sure that it's applicable to that setup also, so that we can release everything at one time. Right. So, and just as a reminder, guys, what we're talking about is is Bill and his buddies are working on Goldberg's garage, a 
whatever signature edition power packages for the Hellcat engines and uh you know uh without releasing the, the numbers other than some of the stuff we talked about on your truck I, I think the idea is to have different stages of performance upgrades on the engine uh ideally would would come with testing and emissions legality and uh and I'm sure at some point once you get to what stage 4 or 5 and you got to build the engine emissions is is no longer uh, on the menu now we're getting to to the big power racing off-road you know versions of the stuff but yeah that's kind of where we are now is is coming up with with packages to to boost their performance um and and try to make it as as emissions legal as as possible. I don't know if it's going to be fifty state, forty nine state. I'm I'm I'm. That's probably more of a money issue than it is an actual clean air issue. So I don't really We're going don't think through things I never imagined we'd have to go. Through. Yeah, uh, honestly, <laughs> like we we talked to our friends in the aftermarket that do like catalytic converters and stuff, and they're like, you know, we don't make two converters. They don't make a fifty state and a forty nine. The difference is is they make one good catalytic converter, and then they just pay extra for the California carb stamp. You know, it's there just it's a money thing. It's not a it's not a clean air thing. They don't make a less clean catalytic converter for the other 49 states. You just pay more money to California. That's 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 uh that's yes, what it is. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. Um all right, but that's we... the heart that's the heartbeat of the of the uh of the of the uh you know, the hobby. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Out in California. I mean, you I, have I, to I, be emissions I, legal out there. Yeah, you do. So I, I don't know. I guess we'll uh, we'll we'll stay tuned and see what's going on with uh, with those with those power packages. It sounds like uh, the stuff that you and I have talked about. It's going to be pretty badass. So excited to see some of that stuff. Um, it's going to be badass, and it doesn't break the bank. You know, out, out there right now, we have obviously a couple competitors, and uh, what they're asking to do, what we're asking to do, and the end result uh, is is much different uh, to the yeah. pocketbook. Yeah. All right. That'll be interesting. Uh, let me tell you guys about Empire Covers, our friends at Empire Covers. You know, nowadays cars are designed to keep you safe on the road, but are you providing the same protection for your car off the road? Empire Covers, they have high quality, affordable car covers and trucks uh, engineered to protect against rain, UV rays, tree sap, pollen, you know, the bug droppings, anything that pretty much uh, damages the vehicle paint. And for premium protection, you can try the American Armor Cover. It's proudly made in their Kentucky factory, and you can get it for RVs, boats, motorcycles, and more. All their covers come with a free multi-year warranty. So if you want some free shipping plus a 15% off your entire order, use promo code at their website. Go to empirecovers.com slash carcast. And use promo code CARCAST. So empirecovers.com, protect what you love. It's not a bad idea. Might as well do that. I, I don't mind it on the indoor as well. You know, I got I moved into my mat cave there, and the way the building is, it's a warehouse, and it's, it's industrial. So there's one skylight, and the skylight kind of is raised, and it's got these louvers on it, and it— you can hear wind and even get a little bit of rain if it's windy and, and rainy out. The, the louvers are supposed to overlap, so it, it doesn't really get a lot of water in, but it does anyway. And it's designed that if there was a fire on the inside, the smoke can go out, right? So mm -hmm. I, I get it, but you can't seal it off and you can't tighten the louvers. So uh, it's been so windy even when I go into my warehouse, I'm starting to see dust and everything. Like it's a little quicker. I I, I imagine some amount of dust, but uh, now that I'm starting to think maybe got to start covering the the things. Or it's so just here gonna... comes the so here comes the question. Yeah, if, if you have a vehicle that's wrapped yeah. or ceramic coated, do you put the cover on inside? Does the cover do anything to the wrap? Does it? I mean, does it damage the wrap if it's over for a long period of time? Could it stick to it? Yeah, I, again, I know we're going to ask some more. Questions. We're going to ask more questions about that. I think it would be fine because the covers have already been designed over the years to be more breathable and stuff to allow 
you know, so you don't get mold and moisture underneath. Uh, you know, it's got to be able to protect from the elements, but also uh, allow the paint and stuff to breathe. So if they're good enough for paint, I imagine they're good enough for, for the wraps and stuff as well. But the pro- the whole idea is, is like you bring your stuff indoors so you you can stare at it and have fun. I don't want to walk in and see a bunch of gray covers. So, uh, it sucks. It's, yeah. it's, it's a thought, yeah. Uh, you can put the clear – like we had – when we were moving stuff around, obviously when the guys paint stuff, they have the big car condom thing, like the big plastic clear cover. But now it just looks like your car is underwater. It just looks or you can get good. a car capsule. Yeah, you can get a then car capsule as well. Much, takes yeah, up a lot of space. That takes up a lot of space as well. But that's really like for the for the real collector cars or or stuff that's very seasonal. You know, you got to park it for months at a time. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the lawman in one of those. Yeah, that that probably makes a little bit more sense. Um, all right, so moving on, I want to get into this uh, this issue just a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time on it because uh, uh, it, it you know it affects us, but also it's like a little bit distant. But this issue with the computer chips, all the chips that are delaying manufacturing, vehicle manufacturing. What's going on is is we get so many of our semiconductor chips from China or various overseas places, mostly China. The pandemic shut down factories. So then they got a backlog of these chips and they had no idea it was going to backlog was going to get so big because it turned out as people were home, they were still kind of buying things. Now we're talking about the automotive space, right? Well, this is everything from small electronics, even iPhones, laptops, computers, you know, uh, I don't know, game stations, DVRs, like everything you can imagine. And in the automotive world, this these chips, these these semiconductors, basically, uh, you know, everything from the ECU computers, the braking systems, transmission controllers, infotainment systems, they're all in vehicles. And some of the car companies are really hit by this. I believe GM is a big one. And now we're back to shutting down factories, <laughs> you know, like – when when the pandemic hit and the car companies shut down for for health reasons, and then when when the car dealers started to open up again, they're like, "Great, but we don't have inventory. We don't have any more cars. We sold what we had on the lots. We need cars." Now it's backed up again. So there was a a meeting of the minds, basically, um, the government, Biden, and uh, and a bunch of the tech companies, and. Car companies, AT&T, Dell, you know, Ford, GM, Stellantis, Intel, Northrop Grumman, like uh, various industries kind of all got together and said, uh, you know, what can we do about this? Uh, how do we fix this on a go forward basis? Uh, you know, because it, it's just widespread. I believe iPhones delayed. N- new iPhones are delayed. Everything's delayed. Um. I want to say that uh, in around 1990, the U.S., we produced 30 37% of the semiconductors that we needed here, and now we're only producing 12%. So significant reduction. Um, so here's here's the answer. The answer is there's absolutely nothing we can do <laughs> to, to, to fix the short-term need. We just got to wait it out. And as all of our partners overseas ramp up and get these things processed and shipped out the door, and hopefully with quality control, then we'll be fine. But the the big discussion was, how do we get ahead of this? Now's the time to push toward more U.S. manufacturing. And yes, a lot of the companies out here, the big uh, uh, tech companies are saying we are interested in in producing this stuff here in the U.S. Uh, and I think I forgot who it was. Maybe it was Intel. They were saying, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna step up what we can do here in the U.S., but it's gonna be a six to nine month ramp up time just to start producing these things." So, uh, I bet Ford's ecstatic. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, they're kind of hit by everybody's hit by this, right? Like everybody's hit, like. But uh, what's it do to the launch of the Bronco? It, it, everything's delayed. Further yeah. delayed. Everything is delayed. Um, uh, all you know, factories are slowed down or halted, and and uh, it's it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit of an of an issue. And 
you know, the- again, again, uh, brings up another point, right? What is it going to do to the production numbers, of these vehicles during 2021 and down the road? Is it going to make the cars much more valuable because not many of them were produced? Right. Yeah. So there it's pr- the question is going to be, w- will it limit the overall manufacturing uh, production numbers? Probably not. But you're right. For the 2020, 2021 models of cars, they will be pretty They will be pretty limited, right? I mean, we, we still have delay on, on the Bronco, full-size Bronco. But there was something like 190,000 uh, orders replaced. Um, I think two-thirds of them ended up being, you know, like legit, like deposits were made. People want them. They're still following up. Um, and also in that regard, there's been so, so much talk, so much popularity, and so much interest in Bronco that uh, we already know that Ford wanted to take Bronco as a standalone brand the way Mustang is, right? All the various Mustangs from GT500, EcoBoost, Mach 1, GT, blah, 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 and Mustang Mach-E. Well, we've got Bronco coming out. We've got Bronco Sport. We've got two doors. We've got four doors. We're going to get Warthog, uh, you know, the, the the big badass Bronco. Now there's talk of doing a pickup truck version, uh, a competitor to a Jeep Gladiator uh, version of Bronco, which could be cool, could be interesting. Um, first, they need to get the big one out. Yes, first, they need to get the big one out. So they Ford hit up. tease anybody else about anything else <laughs> until they can deliver because they're going to start pissing people off. I, I know, but the issue is 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 Ford went to the dealers and said, who would be interested in building a standalone showroom or almost a, a, a standalone dealer? Maybe showroom if it's on the property, something Bronco branded, maybe a little off-road course or something. And of course, part of that is the dealers going, well, what's in store for Bronco? And that's where we get information going, hey, there could be a pickup truck version of Bronco. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what, a hundred dealers right off the bat said, yeah, we're interested in that. We think there's a big future in Bronco. Thank you oh, for bringing yeah. it back. And uh, the orders being placed seem to to make a big difference. So um, uh, so we could end up getting some standalone Bronco rooms. And, so, and, and then it starts, you start to think about if that works for Bronco, do they do it with Mustang for some of the dealers have a Mustang showroom. Like we go out here to Galpin Autosports and mm-hmm. Galpin Motors. They have kind of a Mustang showroom. Um, do, do other car companies start to do it? Does Stellantis do an SRT room, you know, or, you know, and just put the trucks and the cars and all that stuff in there. Although that's a tougher question for them because although, they may keep that brand, or they're or they're not going to keep the brand. I forgot what the damn news was, but uh, the higher ups are saying, SRT, remember? Yeah, yeah, you right. Know, so each, each member went to different facets of the company. Yeah, and and I I don't know. I mean, Mercedes doesn't really have like an AMG showroom or an M showroom with BMW, so uh, they just get everybody into the showroom. But who knows? I mean, the volume could be high enough that it could justify it for things like Bronco. Right. If the Bronco turns out to be what it's what it's advertised, then I can see that happening a hundred percent. Yeah. And a lot of dealers, like you said, jumping on board. I would imagine Galpin would be the first one to throw their hat in the ring. I'm I'm sure they would. They're trying to find real estate. They just opened a, a Land Rover dealer <laughs> across the street, and it, the dealer's badass. It looks great. And uh, I I heard they try to get more space, but um, they're. They're futzing in with landlords and things like that. Um, all right, so I want to talk about uh, real quick this. Um, I want to talk about. Uh, well, first, let me tell you about Geico. Then I want to talk about Toyota Tacoma. We got a lot of responses on the post that I put about Toyota Tacoma. Uh, Geico, you own your home, you rent your home. We know it's a lot of work. Either one of those, and uh, you know. What's easy, of course, is bundling your policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing because we already have so much to do around our homes already. So just go to GEICO.com and get a quote and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. So I've been driving the Toyota Tacoma. 
Uh, I've got the the new one, the twenty one, the the TRD Pro. Um, it's the off road package. It looks badass. It's got the cool grayish color on it and the big tires and and uh, you know it's got a lot of the cool features you'd expect. You know the plug, you know one ten plug in a back and and whatnot. But I'm not a big off roader, so my thoughts and and opinions of it are are going to be just based on my experience, of course. Um, in the city, uh, you, in in the city, and, you know, and fussing yeah. around with the different modes and and doing whatever. But yeah. I know that the Tacoma has been the number one, right? It's been such a huge fan base. It's been the go to mid size truck for so long, especially in off roading. Uh, if you're not getting a Jeep, you're getting a Tacoma. It seems like. Um. And I didn't get a chance to take it off road, so I don't know how it functions in that regard. I imagine very well, right? That's why it's so popular. But I'll tell you, I, I wasn't that impressed with this thing around town. Um, uh, I thought the throttle lagged a little bit. I thought the transmission was always confused. It didn't seem to find the right gear. Uh, it, it as a result of that, it felt. I don't know, kind of lazy off the line. It just felt like I had to give it a lot of throttle to get that thing to move. Like it was, and then when you floored it, it felt like it was getting quick. But uh, you know, but I don't know. It's just sort of like that low end mid range power just didn't seem like it was there. It was kind of interesting, and the the interior, although good, uh, didn't seem great. I understand it's got a lot of plastic and soft touch materials, things that are easy to clean, hit it with a shop vac, wipe it down, especially this TRD Pro with the big, you know, the big rubber floor mats. You take them out, you hose them down. I get the functionality of that por- portion of it. Um, but overall, I wasn't like super impressed with it. So I put it out there up on social media and a lot of people were were responding going, yes, um, a common thing is a gear change. Uh, uh, you know, to get more of that low end acceleration, maybe better off road as well. Um, uh, that seemed interesting to me. Uh, it seemed like a pricey fix, but uh, certainly uh, one way to go. Um, uh, I don't know, and and so, shouldn't have to be done on a brand new vehicle. That's for sure. Yeah, I was just kind of thinking that. Um, you know, and. Uh, you know, 278 horsepower, 265 pound-feet of torque. Um, I think the testing is like mid-7s, 0 to 60. So, I mean, that's not – it's not slow. I mean, a lot of things seem to be in the 6s these days. So maybe I was expecting something a little bit better. What's uh, the price point? You know, the price point, I want to say, starts in the low 30s and works its way up to maybe the mid-40s. I think a TRD Pro with all the options is – uh, 50,000, 40, 45,000, like 45, 45 something. So I think it's, I mean, if you get the base model, two wheel drive, sort of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the little, the little workhorse version, the SR, it's less than 30 grand. It's like 27 and a half grand. And then there's an SR5 and a TRD Sport and the TRD Off-Road is about 35 grand. Limited is about 40,000. TRD Pro is about 45,000 uh, in that range. Um, but what's interesting is the Nissan Frontier hasn't been a particularly popular <laughs> mid-sized truck, small truck. Uh, but here, Nissan just comes out with a completely facelifted uh, version of this thing, more than a facelift. So I say facelift because it's essentially the same uh, chassis, but the chassis has evolved over the years. So when this thing debuted, the platform it's on has evolved so much that it's still good enough to to launch a new truck. And I will say... The new Frontier, um, I, we think it's going to be around twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty thousand bucks. Uh, the styling is on point, right? It's got a muscular look. It looks good. It's uh, when you get into the Pro Four X and the Pro X version. I'll explain that in a second. You you start to get the off road look, the bigger tires, the skid plates. It's got some good clearances and stuff. Uh, it's got like the 
Toyota Tacoma. It's got the you know outlet, 110 plug in the back, new infotainment system. Yes, the Nissan finally has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, there's a couple different screen sizes, digital dash as well. Uh, but compared to the Toyota, uh, this has 310 horsepower, um, which is uh, which is a bit of a step up. Uh, a little more uh, torque as well, 281 pound feet of torque. Um, what did we say the trail was like 280 something? So, uh, you know, not 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 too bad in that regard. Now, there's an S and an SV trim. Then there's a Pro 4X. That's like the TRD Pro Tacoma. It's the all-wheel, four-wheel drive, off-road looking version. However, they do a Pro 4X and a Pro. Uh, uh, X, I believe it is. So you can get a two-wheel drive version with the off-road look or a four-wheel drive version with the off-road look. So if you just want the two-wheel drive version... You get it in the two-wheel drive. Yeah, so you can do either way. Um, New 8-inch touchscreen. I think there's an upgradable to a 9-inch version up there. uh, 7-inch driver display uh, with analog gauges on the side. So you got nice digital... uh, uh, gauges in in the second or in the middle there, um, and it looks good. I I don't know. So it's like it's got a little bit more power. Um, not a, not the highest tow rating. It's I don't know six thousand or sixty five hundred pounds. Some of the the more tow version like Colorado and Jeep Gladiator uh, will will be able to tow more. Um, you know, and again, if you're buying it for towing, that's one of the things you really look at. But if you're not buying it for towing, you're looking at all of these other features. Um, anyway, so it was just kind of interesting to spend a little bit of time in that. I wasn't trying to 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 dog on the, on the Tacoma, but I was just, I guess, I had this preset notion in my head of uh, the bar was raised higher uh, when I got into it. I thought it was fine, and I get it. Um, and it's fun to drive, but because the bar was set high, I guess my only reasonable conclusion would be a little bit disappointment. <laughs> um, and that's yeah. fair because that's your objective opinion. Everybody else can kiss your ass because it's your <laughs> opinion. Well, I, I honestly, I, I think some people were saying, you know, previous model was a little bit better or a little more fun. And I know a lot of people have different opinions of that like anything that has this much longevity into it you're going to be you're always going to say things like oh i like you know the gen 1 or gen 2 or gen 3 or of, of anything so uh i appreciate everybody hopping onto social media and just kind of uh uh you know looking what i what i wrote and commenting uh, I like to hear all the comments from the people that have them. You know, I didn't know about the common thing being a – or fairly common thing would be a gear change, which seems to be what, what people were telling me. Um, and it was interesting because I had pointed out uh, a week or so ago, you know, these are all things that the aftermarket could easily address. And we are big fans of the aftermarket here. We modify pretty much everything we touch because we enjoy it. Um, and uh, and I said, hey, you know, there's a great supercharger package out there. I think Magnuson has a supercharger package for it. It's a good way to add, I don't know, 30 or so percent horsepower, add another 80, you know, maybe 80, 90 horsepower. Um, that's a cool option. And I pointed out that, a lot of companies now are doing this um, handheld plug-in, you know, this OBD2 port plug-in that changes the throttle response. And I thought that might be an inexpensive way of making it a little snappier around town without spending much money. Um, and I swear I didn't know this was going to happen. But as I walked into the studio, Chris handed me an ad and he said, hey, we've got a new sponsor. <laughs> so my discussion on the Tacoma has nothing to do with this ad. However, the timing couldn't be better. So I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, the BD Power TS Booster. So say goodbye to that dead, laggy throttle pedal feeling and enjoy quicker response <laughs> and acceleration with the BD Power TS Booster. The TS Booster amplifies the signal between the throttle pedal and the ECM to give you quicker reaction time and forces your performance cur- curve to occur sooner. It's achieving quicker engine response and more of that fly back in your seat kind of feeling. 
It has factory connections, mean a painless install, gives you six acceleration levels and a security mode. There's no need to program. The TS Booster has a sophisticated AI and it'll do the work for you. It's learning the appropriate settings of your particular vehicle and your particular uh, application from your throttle inputs. So uh, here's a list of some of the features. You can get it for the gas engines, diesel, electric, pretty much. uh, They're coming out with applications for almost everything out there. You get quicker engine response and acceleration, reduced pedal lag, which I think that that Tacoma needs. It has multiple sensitivity settings. You can do an eco mode, a street, a sport, a race, and even a ludicrous mode. Take it a little bit of Tesla there. Uh, There's valet and security modes as well. Here's the thing. It doesn't affect your warranty, and there's no emissions tampering. We're not really changing the performance of the vehicle at all. You're just recalibrating it a little bit. It's easy to install with factory connections. Most of the time, it just plugs into your OBD2 port. So check out tsbooster.com and enter code CARCAST to get 50 bucks off your purchase. That's tsbooster.com. Enter code Car cast. Uh, all right, so wasn't really uh, wasn't really planning on that, but it was a nice little surprise. Uh, I just my- got email. I just got a text that ADD is pumping out new products for the TRX as we speak. Oh yeah, okay. So finally, we get some aftermarket stuff from someone other than the manufacturer. That actually fits the vehicle. Yeah. First any idea? Three. Any idea what they're going to be doing? Yeah, you're saying bumpers. Well, it looks like the fr- the front and rear bumpers. Front and rear bumpers. Yeah. <sighs> Which is a hard decision because if you look at the front of that vehicle, it's gorgeous from the factory. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's and good so looking. to take that lower portion off. Um. I'm I'm toying with it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking with the height and the 37s, I go right over any gear, so I don't need a push bumper. <laughs> yeah, you don't really need the push bumper. Yeah, I, I my thing about the off road stuff is, um, I don't know. It's just I I I I'm so into like the sports car stuff, and obviously Adam's collection is 100 feet away, and it's just full of race cars, and everything in there is about weight reduction. <laughs> and everything about off-roading is not. It's so, not. Yeah. It's about durability. So it's like, hey, let's take off the plastic bumper and put on an 85-pound steel bumper. Uh, I hey, get. Let's, I, let's put a let's put a 37 with a wheel in yeah. my in my in my bed so that I can have five of those big, extremely heavy things on my truck. Yeah. Now but, I, but, I I start to get why. You, you add so much power to the vehicle because they're so heavy, so big to begin with, right? And then you yep. want the added clearance, so you go to the 37s, and the 37s just eats horsepower and gear. It just eats all of that stuff. So, uh, uh, Well, yeah, and, and you know, I, I went through getting aftermarket 20s for it, right? Yeah. And then I'm looking at uh, uh, Black Rhino, right? They're one of my sponsors, and they were nice enough to front me another set of wheels, but... I'm looking at the weight reduction on, or the weight difference between all the wheels, and they're coming in at 46 pounds per wheel. Yeah, you know, and then you think, oh well, I'm going to save six pounds per wheel here, and then this, and then I'm going to put the bumper on, and it's going to x that one out, and so it's like I just put a thousand horsepower in it. Just That's what I'm saying. Yeah, put yeah. ornaments on it, and it'll go. But when when you start to look at the brakes as well, right? Uh, right That's next. And the issue is with brakes, and we had this great discussion the other day. I was talking to the guys at Willwood. We should have them come in and and, uh, and chat a little bit about this. But I did the brakes on my Lightning, and uh, we did. Um, uh, I believe I have fourteen inch rotors with uh, with a four piston caliper in the back and a six piston in the front, and. Although I felt like it was significantly improving the stopping power of the vehicle, um, I, I'm having a little pressure with a little bit of an issue with a, with a squishy pedal feel um, and uh, uh, quite a bit of travel on the brakes, especially compared to a newer vehicle. So we started having discussions. Uh, is, 
is the master cylinder large enough? Is the bore large enough? Is the brake booster large enough? Um, although I went to a six-piston caliper, is it enough surface area? When you look at the brakes that came on that truck, big drums in the back and a big like truck-style disc in the front and a big caliper, and it may be like a two-piston caliper, but you got to think of the surface area. Right, So you may go to a six-piston caliper, but if it's smaller than what was originally on there, the brakes have to do much more work right, to stop the vehicle. So although I feel like it is stopping the vehicle, just the technology difference of going to a modern-day caliper and going to rear disc with modern – it feels like it's stopping better, but the feel isn't there. So the, the one of the things we may end up doing is is we're going to a larger – excuse me, a larger caliper on the front. And Willwood in this particular case has one that uh, is a little bit larger overall surface area, but fits on the same brackets that I have. So an easy stage one fix, if you will, would be to just swap the calipers. Don't change the brackets or anything and kind of take it from there. And then we may end up looking at the master cylinder and saying, is is it enough? Is there a way to increase that? So especially in these bigger vehicles, the off-road vehicles that like what you're talking about with the TRX, you have to look at the overall surface area of what's on there currently. And if you step up to something, Will would bear, you know, uh, who knows what, uh, Brembo, uh, Brembo, you know, you have to think about, oh, maybe you went from a four-piston to a six-piston, but is that caliper surface area greater than what you had to begin with because that's the, probably the only way you're going to be getting more braking performance and and again we'll we'll save this uh, conversation to you know to the to the experts that know this experts. a little better <laughs> know a little well, better I, but, a, I, I got a quick question maybe yeah. you can answer this I got one this Trans Am out the other day and yeah. started it for the first time in two and a half years and I took it around the storage and what does it mean when you get a violent uh, uh, jumping out of the brake pedal once you, once you <laughs> depress the brake. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. It that, didn't stop very well. No. You know, I, it depends on the last time you drove it, if it was raced and parked and whatever, but it could be warped rotors at that point. Uh, the warp rotors, you know, um, it, I, you could kind of drive slowly, not super slow, but not fast, you know, whatever, 30 yeah. miles an hour. And kind of just let your hands off the wheels a little bit as well and get on the brakes and see if it starts to pull one side or the other and where you can start to feel the vibration. Um, but yep. it's, it sounds like probably a warped rotor issue. Yeah. You know. Um, Sitting. That's what happens. Yeah. Or putting it away like real hot. Like if you did a big track day and if you parked it and like, you know, set an e-brake or if the, if the, you know, something like that, you know, um, who knows. But uh, lots of things, lots of things that could be happening on uh, to warp to warp the rotors. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about Dodge real quick. Dodge has officially opened orders of the new 2021 Durango SRT Hellcats, the most powerful SUV ever. As you guys know, this is exclusive for 2021. Only 2,000 units will be made. So hurry and see if uh, you still can find a dealer that has one. If not, don't worry. They've got the RT. That's still a badass one as well. But the... Uh, the, the Hellcat has 710 horsepower. It's got this new aggressive styling and a new interior with a driver-centric cockpit that you guys will like. All buyers of the uh, SRT Durango Hellcat will receive a full day of pro instruction at the Radford Racing School. Deliveries have already begun, so hurry out there and see if you can get one. Dodge was ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Power. It's the first U.S. brand ever to be ranked Number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your local Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com today to schedule your test drive. I oh. just saw something this morning uh, on the news about that vehicle, about them producing more. Are they? Maybe because there was a delay. <laughs> everything's delayed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, everything's delayed. Yeah. I'm trying to see. I've got, uh, I've got my... Durango Hellcat scheduled for delivery is going to be Monday the 26th, so about two weeks. Uh, Monday the 26th. That week I'll be driving the Durango Hellcat. I'll let you guys know how that's going to go. 
And then we've got a bunch of hot Audis. And I'm trying to still get that TRX uh, on the schedule. I can let my na- my neighbor. Let you I know. He's it. got a bunch of them. <laughs> he's, got, uh, he's got a bunch of them over there. Uh, Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat Production Extended. But maybe not, maybe not expanded. You're saying more than two thousand units, or that's or, what I thought. But I, I, or they yeah, yeah. We'll get some clarification on that. Already we'll sold it. out all of their two thousand units, except for a few dealer allocated units. Now the automaker has apparently changed its mind and decided to produce at least a few more for the folks who missed out. Well, there you go. Now's the time. Hurry and go get it because they were pretty much go sold get out. It now. Yeah. Hey, oh. come out of here. That's <laughs> right. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Leave that, it to Dodge. It's kind of interesting. I, I tell you, I, right. I, I virtually bite my tongue for lack of a better word. I mean, maybe I just like bite my thumbs. I don't know what the, what the texting version of bite your tongue is. Every time I'm on bring a trailer and I see the SRT 10, uh, truck with the six speed manual and the Viper engine in it. I keep meaning to text it so you. Bad. I know. know we've talked I, about this two years ago. It's like, I, it's, I still want one. It's such a badass thing. It's completely inefficient, way over the top. And <laughs> the uh, only truck ever produced that got less gas mileage than what my TRX. Oh my God. And, and you have to get the standard cab to get the manual. 100%. Right. And so the question is, would you fit in it? Because yes, the, the issue with standard cab vehicles like my Lightning is you can't lean the seat back. You can't roll yeah. it back, can't lean it back. Um, you know, and it, it almost has me tempted to try to like, it would be a ridiculous amount of money and not worth it. But to, to take the cab of my truck and actually add like like an inch or two of cab, cut it and add it. And it's funny because I look at it all the time and I go, you know what? There's a couple of really good metal fabricators that can do that. Probably no problem. The oh, issue yeah. is on the interior. You know, how do you expand the headliner and all the trim and, and all that shit to line back up and make it look stock? Are you, you spend You're a more... midget anyway. When yeah, you need to I, I could fit. Bigger. I could fit. It's fine. I'm driving it. It's good. It's fine. Uh, uh, anyway, and speaking of that, uh, been moving... Um, yeah, grabbing a bunch of the parts from here, moving it over to to my garage, and uh, loading them all up on the on the shelves on the lev rack system. So now I've got like like my most immediate truck rack, where, which is because I'm be building the engine. So I've got the intake in there, the cams there. I got the heads, the lifters, the roller rockers. Mm-hmm. I got all that stuff laid out now um, on the shelves of that rack. And then the next one over is some of the Mustang stuff, right? Intake and some of those pieces. Uh, and uh, because over here, although the car has been sitting over there, obviously very famously on the lift for a long time, so much of my parts were in a shed. It's kind of stacked up. And when you had to go and get something, you had to pull all this shit out and then you got to go find what you want. So I live your life. Believe me. <laughs> so anyway, just kind of uh, nice to be able to get some things organized and take inventory of what I have. And you forget some things that you have and, 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 realize the things that you need and all the little bits. Now I've got my intake manifold bolts lined up, oil pan bolt, uh, studs lined up. I got the head studs next to the cylinder heads so I can start getting some work done on it. And hopefully, cross your fingers, finish that Mustang. <laughs> nice. Organization's a yeah, good right? thing. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put a call into level rack. Yeah. Level rack. rack. For sure. Um, and, but I don't need as much storage space as I previously thought because yesterday I added another bathroom to the bottom level, which further extends my build. But you know. <laughs> Nothing like waiting to the last minute. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to do a Goldberg only little urinal like in the podcast room. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, for company, it really doesn't bode well. So, yeah. You know, they pretty much had a meeting of the minds at Metron and all got together and ganged up on me and made me put a bathroom downstairs. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and let's wrap things up. Uh, we're going to give the studio over to uh, to our to our friends. Um, I think Dr. Drew's coming in, right? Yeah, Drew's coming in. All right. So we're going to wrap things up. Thanks so much for uh, for tuning in. I will. Uh, 
Uh, if you guys saw the uh, the stuff up on social media, you'll see the uh, Tacoma. Let me know what you guys think about that. So follow me at Motorator on social media and follow Goldberg and Goldberg's Garage. It's on Instagram. It's on Twitter. Instagram's usually the place to be if you want to see all the fun car stuff right now. So yes, give sir. us a follow, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, buddy. Until next time, keep the, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.